So hey guys, it's Zion again. Here's some more Black Ops 2. Today's topic is teaching, in gaming, and in life. I got to thinking about this when I really started thinking about graduate schools. I want to be a game designer, as any of you who have been with me know. And the one school that I had sort of banked on had a very strict and difficult application process that I have failed twice. I'm not going to lie about that. But what I will say is that it's taught me a lot about myself and my own workflow. And about my own learning style. In trying to study up for the application, I had started learning the Unreal Engine using the Unreal Developers Kit, or UDK. And on the UDK site, where you can download it for free, so long as you aren't making a commercial game, they have a bunch of tutorial sites. And I have been using a single type of tutorial. Short videos on the bare minimum basics of UDK, essentially. And the first major thing that you learn is a simple level. Just a couple of rooms, a few lights, a few boxes, and things like that. And in that video, they claim and they tell you, if you have a better idea, by all means, go and do it. But I learned for myself that I can't build just a two-room level and learn everything I need to learn. Looking into the timing and the amount of videos per tutorial for lighting and static meshes and all that, you have between 15 and 25 for the basics and the simple level. And then you have less than 10 for the rest of it. And while I know this is just the basics of UDK, and they want you to do a lot of your own work, for me and my learning style, and maybe some of your learning styles as well, they don't give you much beyond that initial two-room box of a level. And so, going back, thinking more seriously about things, I said to myself, all right, what else does Epic say I should look at? And I found a couple other things that are commercial level. Tutorials, things you have to pay for. But looking at them, because you're paying for them, there's a lot more to them. And I found a couple different tutorials, both of which I consider superior to the ones that I was using. And for one reason, what these tutorials are teaching you is not just the basics of UDK, because you can learn that anywhere. They're taking you through the process of building a full, two-scale gaming level. Not a simple box that's going to teach you the basics of lighting and static meshes. No, no, no. This is from beginning to end, a complete level that you might see in a professionally built game. And for me, that's important, because I see all the little tricks, all the little concessions you have to make. And the tutorial I finally decided on had two things that I found important. One, documentation. Over 500 pages, so they say, of documentation detailing the entirety of building that level. And two, the ability to put that level into beta stage. And early on, they don't ask you to build the level with materials and textures and all that. No, 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 no. They tell you to build just the bare minimum. No textures, no materials, no skybox, nothing. Just create the skeleton. And then go in with friends, if you, ha if you can get them, or bots, and playtest the hell out of it. And that's something that I knew happened with level design. But it's not something I expect the tutorial to tell me. But it's important. Playtesting a map is one of the most important parts of level design because as a level designer, all you see is the map. You don't see where it's wrong because you can only see what you've built as good. But a bunch of different eyes, even a different set of eyes for yourself, where you're learning where you thought the traffic patterns would be to where they actually are. The high trap, the choke points you created were not the choke points that actually happened. And so you have to learn and adapt your level based on the movement of players in that level. 
Now, this will be harder with bots. And I don't know anyone that's available to test my level with me. But I will be able to learn a whole lot just using the bots. One of the mistakes I made in doing the simple level, the free tutorials, was that I didn't do everything alongside the teacher. And while he does emphasize that you should branch out if you want to, for me, I have to know what I'm doing before I can branch out. And without having done the full tutorial with the simple level, I wouldn't have known that. So my plan then is to follow along to the letter for as long as I conceivably can do so. Because this is a full level. This is a skybox. This is directional dominant lighting. This is everything that makes a competitive Unreal Engine level instead of just a little box where people are just going to learn the bare minimum of basics. And so it got me thinking about teaching styles. And for me, I have to learn by doing, by listening, and by seeing. And if I'm not doing a complete thing, it's not working for me. And when I'm in school, for real, when I was in school, you would get like a, a math textbook, say. Calculus 1. Let's just use that as an example. They would give you the bare minimum of what you're supposed to do. Say you're differentiating something, taking it from x squared to 2x plus c. Great. That's what they show you. x squared differentiated using Riemann sums and limits and all that sort of gobbledygook is 2x plus c. And that's all they tell you. They don't explain that you'll be doing a whole lot more complicated stuff. And then when you actually get to the problems you're supposed to do for homework, they hit you with the most complicated inequalities you could possibly think of based on your skill set at the time. And I can't learn like that. I can't have someone say to me, here's the basics, now apply it to a really complicated problem. No, that doesn't work for me. I want someone to tell me how to do everything in very great detail, and then I can start applying it. And that probably is something of a cop-out on my end. But for me, I want to be sure I'm doing everything right before I start doing everything myself. Mostly because I'm not confident in my own abilities half the time. And I think that, oh, if I do something wrong, I'll break whatever equipment it is I'm using. Or at the beginning of a problem, I'll do it so wrong to start out with that the end of the result will be so much worse than what it would otherwise be. And so, a teacher, especially one who isn't directly available, like online tutorials, should, I think, not focus on just the bare minimum. Because if there are questions that come up with just the bare minimum available to you, you're not going to be able to get those answers that you want. But I think, and I hope, I'm going to get answers to my questions because they're going through an entire level. I know I've said that a lot. When you're learning something as important and as in demand as level design, the teacher and how you're instructed is important. Anyone in college or grad school will tell you that the teacher usually makes the class. You can have one of the most difficult subjects, but the right teacher will make it make sense no matter how hard it is, for the most part. There will be some people who just can't get it, and calculus for me was one of those things. But if you have the right teacher, and he's teaching the right way, there's nothing you can't accomplish in that class. And so I think and I hope for me, having everything laid out in front of me and say, here's how I would do it. This is not necessarily how you would do it, but this is my workflow. Now, if you want to use my workflow and adapt it, because adaptation is everything in industry, in the professional world. And if you can't adapt to constant changes, you won't succeed.